even me, man, like I made a bunch of money on the Russian ruble. When I saw the way the war was going, I made, I'm 30, 40 million dollars I made. I knew the ruble was gonna go up. That's an all time high now. But that takes perspicacity. This is also come, talks into, this comes into network. The average person is not sitting around having conversations about the war in Ukraine and the Russian ruble and the financial impact of the war. Me and my team and my network, we're different. Like most people see the news. They watch the news. Okay, cool. So this is this is the war room. This is the war room. Because my, my boy, he also he also lives out here and he also did the same thing with the ruble and he didn't make a good amount of money right now, right? So it's like, I guess these are the kind of secrets that you get in the war room and that's why you have to be in it every single day having these having these productive conversations so that you can be able to seek out see the, the different informations across the world and see mm, how can we take advantage of the things that are going on right there was this one there was this one video that i saw on instagram of this homeless guy who who was being interviewed in florida or some shit and i don't even, i don't even know if he was homeless but he he, he looked like a bum he looked like a wagey he looked like a broker or whatever and they asked him they're like what do you like to do? What's your one um, leisure, like pleasure that you like to do? And his answer astonished me. I'm like, bro, this man's fucking genius. He was like, I like to go places where a natural disaster or something terrible just happened, bro. And he was like, like, because things are a lot cheaper. And he's like, yo, I can't prevent these things from happening. So like when there's a hurricane in Florida, guess what? Things are going to be a lot cheaper around that area. Flights are going to be a lot cheaper in that time, right? That's something that recently happened, right? Or when there's like a bombing in a certain in a certain uh, area or location, it's like that's the best place to go visit it because, you know, people right there are desperate. You know, when the news sits here and it's like, oh, this happened, people tend to stay away from it because they're scared. But that's probably the best time to start going there and take advantage of those low prices and you're also helping that community in that term. So you're kind of benefiting off the bat. So it's like, you know, that's that's my mentality behind that. And that's how that man sat here and got a lot of great deals or great value from trips. So in the war room, you got to be really, really, really invested in getting to know these people, having these conversations so that you can be able to, while you're working and have this money on the side, be able to take advantage of those opportunities. That's That's what I'm learning here. Okay, yeah, okay. <gasps> anyway, me and my team, we're watching the news. Okay, how can that make us money? How can that make me money? How can that make me money? Right. And, and, and it's a different attitude. I'm having endless conversations about the financial impacts of the war in Ukraine and whether we think that Russia is going to win or lose. And now the Russian ruble is at an all-time high. The Russian economy is stronger than it's ever been. After crashing at the height of the sanctions when they, they took away the sovereign wealth fund of Russia, which is fucking criminal anyway, they, they, they did that. It, it dumped down and now it's higher than it's ever been. On a, on, a, on a currency to get a 3x? Yeah. It's like, it's nearly unheard of. People don't talk about these things. Mm. It's, I'd say this another thing. I say to, my, to, to people who ask me, they go, Andrew, how do I get rich? And I say, okay, well, you're probably not going to get rich because I, I bet you're lazy, but let's say you're not lazy. The number one habit that people need to adopt, and this is a habit I had for a very long time, and I've actually recently cleared it from my brain because I've reached a point where peace of mind is worth more than money. But every single time money is spent, you need to identify how your money was taken from you. And I say taken because money can't be made. Money is taken because the only people who can make money are the government. So if you're a government, you can make money. You can print it from thin air or a bank. But if you're a person, you're not making money. You're convincing other people to give it to you. You're taking money from others. So every single time you spend money on anything, you need to identify how it was taken from you. When you go and buy a coffee, don't just go buy the coffee and sit down. Sit down. Exactly. And this, this is the point that I was trying to make with that is the value at the return at which you're getting it with your hard earned dollar that you put time into, right? Think about what you're buying and why you're buying it. And, you know, maybe, you know, when I, when I think even about buying groceries, right? It's like, I got to go get gas and I got to go to this place or I can go just go down the street. Don't have to pay for gas. Don't have to do this, right? And I just, I just think about the value that I'm getting in return and kind of also, how did that really get there? Right. When I go buy like certain shoes, like how, how did people, why am I buying this specific shoe? Right. This specific Brown, how brand, how did that really get there? I learned this concept when I started working in a, in a hospitality industry in a, in a very famous, you know, um, really Michelin star restaurant. I realized that there are so many layers that, and things that people put into that don't even, that, 
that most com- most restaurants don't even understand, right? So it's essentially when you're going to go serve somebody, right? Everybody's moving and flowing in one direction. And, and the people see this and they're kind of amazed by it. Another thing was pretty much um, like you would you would be trained to spot um, when, a, when a guest eats with their left or right hand, right? And then you'd immediately learn to sit here. Okay, when you're going to set up the table, you know this, or we're going to start serving them. Crap. All right, and you and you and you're gonna uh, put their civil word down. You might put it on their right hand if they're right-handed. So it's like, and that person's like, "Damn, how they notice that?" Like, like it's just little things like that that make you increasingly more valuable. And that's why those dishes were more and more expensive because of the service you were getting. And people didn't mind at all to spend that money. Say, so why did I buy this coffee? Okay, I really want coffee. Yeah, but then why did I go into this store and not that store? Is it better advertising? Does it have less of a line? Do they have a How did they convince me to come in here? How much did this coffee cost? Six quid. What's the profit margin on that? Probably five pound 50, five pound 80 probably by the time. The cup probably costs more than the coffee. The coffee is just water. How did they convince me to spend six pounds in this place? And when you sit there and analyze and you all start to learn little lessons about business, you'll learn about the importance of the signage. You'll learn about the importance of there being no queue. Yeah. So that if you ever run a business, tell me, I say with my business, my people all the time, faster. All the time, quicker. Yeah. It's like I have a couple businesses that are physical. I'm like, I don't want to see a line. Fast. I don't want it to see empty because it looks bad. So when there's lines, you work fast. When we're down to one or two people. You take your time. You talk to the customer. Right. You keep it so there's like always one person at the thing. Like manage the line. Like people don't think about this stuff. No one's gonna sit and wait in a long ass queue. Maybe some idiots will, but people like me won't. We've got shit to do, right? My time's worth money. I'm not gonna stand and wait in a line. So you have to identify how your money is taken from you. If you start doing that with every single time you spend anything ever, you're going to start to identify business opportunities and you're going to sit there and you're going to have coffee and you're going to go, you know what? They could have sold cake and they didn't. Could I- and here, here's how I would actually recommend um, that you start training your brain. This is something that I've been doing, all right? Is watch the show Shark Tank, all right? Just watch it meticulously, bro. Study that shit maybe one hour a day, bro. Just watch an episode a day. And your brain is going to start seeing it when you go out to the real world. You're like, damn, like, shit, like, these are the deals that are being made. This is why, this is how this kind of got there. Like, now I really understand. And then you're, you're, breaking in, you're, you're breaking it down in your brain that how much the show is educating you on business, on entrepreneurship, on like these percentages and, and how much money people are putting in, how much value they're getting in return, you know, and, and, and how you, what skills do you possess that you can help grow another business exponentially and then basically exit. Outcompete this place. Let's imagine I had the money to start a coffee shop right next door. How would I outcompete them? Well, I'd have cake because they don't have cake. Also, most people in here are businessmen. And this, the guy serving some dude. No, we need a cute waitress. His ass is fired. We need a chick. Put our chick here, put some cake in. Uh, Financial Times, business people in. Think, people don't even think about this stuff. They don't use their brain ever. They don't ever look around and realize how they're spending their money. They don't look around and look at which businesses are successful. They don't look around and pay attention to anything. They don't look at the world and all the things that are happening and how it can benefit them. None of it. They don't look at any of it. They're too busy following the circus. That's why it's clown world. They yeah. know all about the football results. Right, and they yeah. know all about Rihanna. Yeah. They know all about that crap. All about Love Island. They'll yeah. talk about Love Island all day. The same people who will march and fucking for labor saying, oh, the Tories are bad, labor, labor. Watch Love Island at night. No wonder you're broke. You're a fool. You're a dummy. And no matter what the government does, no matter what a government or a financial system, no matter what they put together, it's always going to be competitive to some degree unless it's communism, which has been tried and they're trying to bring back and we know how that all ends. Communism ends very, very quickly in violence because there's no way to enforce anything. But no matter what they do or what law they make, there's gonna be people who work harder than you and they're gonna make more money than you. So if you're gonna be a lazy dummy watching Love Island and not paying attention every time you spend money and not try and think and use your brain, guess what? You're gonna stay fucking broke. Yeah. And, and, and I'm also gonna say this now. I know for a fact when I talk about how the world works, And people say, but why would the people in charge do that? And I say, because they view you as scum. And the reason they view you as scum is I can say this, and I'm not saying this in a horrible way. I'm from a council estate, right? I came from absolutely nothing. And I'm now at my position in life. I know how hard I've worked. When I meet somebody who's whatever, 50 years old, and they have absolutely zero money, I don't think, oh, he's had it hard. I thought, he just didn't, he was lazy. 
I don't, I, you're, sympathy disappears after a certain amount of time. When you can, when you pull it off, yeah. you pulled it off, I pulled it off. When you've been through X amount of shit to pull it off and everyone's just coming out with excuses all the time, sympathy vanishes. Yeah. Like, Look, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't buy your shit. Right. You, go, you, you, did, you were too busy sniffing, drinking pints, doing all this dumb shit. I wasn't doing it. I don't feel sorry for you people. And uh, that's what happens after a certain amount of time. So if you think, if I feel that way, and I'm also from a council estate, imagine these people who were born as billionaires. Yeah. How do you think they view us? You think they give a shit about wrecking our currency? <laughs> Fuck, you better find something to eat on the floor. They don't give a shit. This world is, this world is so much crueler than people understand. I, 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 I've had people all the time come to me saying, yeah, I wanna make money. Go take a half an hour and learn about fractional reserve banking. Learn how it even, how the, you don't even know how money works. Yeah. You don't even know how a bank works. Like, how are you going to make something you don't know what it is? Right. Like, it's, it's crazy. Emotional One of the first damage. Topics I do was where you talk about how money's like water. Mm -hmm. And that I thought was a really good analogy because money is always moving. Yeah. Um, and that's, again, coming back to, to property, because yeah. you know how much I love, I love real estate. Of course. Is if you look on the Sunday Times rich list, 90% yeah. of them either made their money through real estate or made it through business or otherwise, and are now investing in real estate. Of course. If you can get around people that are in the property market, yeah. even if you've got no money, yeah. being in that environment, let, even if it's a case of finding deals, passing them on to the investors, yeah. it's where the money is. Comple oh no, that's completely and utterly true. And, and, and yeah. Oh shit. That was another gold gem right there, bro, by Samuel Leeds right there, bro. That, that, that was a golden gem within itself, right? It's surround yourself with people that are doing something. What can you provide for the people that are moving around the money? This is something that I've actually learned from my friend. Um, shout out to my boy, uh, Andres Inga. All right. He's a real estate photographer. And yeah, he's a real estate photographer and he's starting his own. He, well, he started his own business. He's doing very, very well over $10,000 a month, actually. And he started going to these networking meetings, right? And it's like, these networking meetings, he started to realize, oh, these are people that are kind of like-minded. They're making way bigger deals than I'm making. And they've just surrounded themselves with other people that are making so much different, like so much money. And all he has to do is kind of be in between and see where he can provide value. Where's the new opportunity? And by being able to connect himself with those people, by being able to share those experiences and seeing what he can do, how he can help them sell. All right. They pay him off. He builds this connection. And when he has hit, when he has money, he knows, yo, like I'm gonna be able to get clients like that. And that's what's happened. He's been able to build and scale his business that way. So it's like, you know, so if you have a certain skill skill set, or at least if if you don't know anything about real estate, even people that that don't know anything about real estate and just have a nine to five job, even they're allowed to go to those networking meetings, just just to be able to surround themselves and learn from these people, which is great. It's a cycle of precipitation, right? So. Uh, a cloud comes, it rains, it falls down to the ground, it, it goes under, under the ground, whatever, goes into a stream, it moves into the stream, goes to the ocean, evaporates again up to a cloud, floats somewhere else, falls down again. It's always moving. That's how money is. People think that money is in these large stagnant pools hidden, hidden in people's bank accounts. That's not really true. Money is constantly moving all the time. And if you can find a way to get in between it and stand in the right place at the right time, you're going to get wet. That's absolutely not. Really That's true. awesome analogy. Uh, it, it, but it's true. I'm gonna steal it, by the way. You can. It's no problem. It's true. Um, right. So it's like you're that that that's literally the perfect saying for your network is your net worth. That's it. And a lot of people have done that, right? I mean, even the little example I was talking about earlier. If anybody with a brain didn't invest in pharmaceutical companies at the beginning of COVID, I mean, if you didn't buy stock in Abbott at the beginning of COVID, don't know why. If you didn't invest in the arms companies at the beginning of this forever war, I don't know why. Like, it's easy. Where's the money going? To Ukraine to buy guns. So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna buy stock in Raytheon. Like, it's, it's, it's not complicated stuff. It goes into also, we'll talk about um, network and how important that is. But it's interesting you say about being in the room where people are making <laughs> See, yo, so, sometimes, I, sometimes I feel like I swear I'm like one step ahead, bro, because I already know where they're going with these conversations. I'm talking about property deals. I say the same thing. I say this to people. I say, if you're in a room full of ice cream experts, ice cream, and all they talk about is ice cream, how to make ice cream, their favorite flavor, the best way to store it, how much it costs to produce, how to transport it, and that's all they talk about is ice cream. Even if you have no interest in ice cream, over a long enough period of time, you're gonna end up knowing stuff about ice cream. You're gonna end up knowing shit. You're gonna be like, ah, that's double chocolate this, it costs this much, and this is how they moved it. You're gonna know things about ice cream. If you're in a room full of people who only talk about money, then you're gonna end up knowing about money. It's exactly the same thing. 
And net work is net worth. Everyone understands this. And Sheesh. people also said understand it. that my people become the sum of the five people they spend the most time with. Yeah. But then they hang around with losers. <laughs> it just blows my mind. It's like, man, I, I'm a busy man. Like, I don't have time. All these opportunities I've given a little away. I've told a little bit about domain names, a little bit about uh, the Russian ruble, a little bit about uh, stocks, etc. I'm very busy myself. But my network, I, I, have, I have hundreds of people who I talk to all doing this shit. Hey, Tate, have you seen this? Boom. And I'll throw him something. He'll throw me something. Da, da. That's my ecosystem. That's who I talk to. Those are my friends. We don't Boom. So always sharing information, always having people that are waking up, thinking critically, right? And then being able to pass each other that information, being able to create a plan and then taking and executing on that plan. I like that shit, man. Fucking W, bro. That, that, that's, that's the greatest mentality you can really have, bro. And, and that's truly how you create good friends. Talk about Rihanna. We don't talk about the football. We don't talk about Love Island. We don't talk about anything other than money. Yeah. How are we not going to make hundreds of millions of dollars? How are we not going to? How am I not going to have money? Like that's all we talk about. That's all we do. So I say this to people and say, when's the last time we talked about the coffee shop example? I say this to people all the time. When's the last time you sat and talked about money? What do you mean? When's the last time you sat down with someone and talked about money? Well, what do you mean talk about money? Well, if you don't know what to talk about, then you don't understand money. So go learn how money works. Go learn how a bank works. Go sit on YouTube for free. You don't just pay 50 grand in four years at a university. Pretty much what he's saying is surround yourself with people that are doing shit in the world that have actual businesses, all right? Ask them about their businesses, learn from their failures and see where you can apply it. Or maybe even ask them, hey, yo, listen, do you want do you want to start something new? Do you want to start something different? Or even how can you help them and make a certain percentage of that? All right, because that's truly like communicating with somebody else and sharing and those conversations are things that you have control over, right? About money, about helping somebody else. Somebody always wants to make money. So if you can talk to them about how you can help them make money, that's essentially all cold calling is, is trying to get to know somebody, asking the right questions, getting the right answers and being able to help them um, quickly and promptly as possible. Go sit on YouTube and understand money, banking, or the real estate market, any of it. Understand the, the last housing price crash, why it happened. Understand mortgage rates and how that's affected by interest rates. Understand it, and then go sit with someone else who understands it and talk about it. Oh yeah, 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 I should do that, yeah, yeah. Back to TV. Yeah. Dumbasses. So like they do, it's, it's, I don't wanna be a negative person, because I'm not. But to a degree, I, I think the universe is very giving. And I've yet to experience in my 36 years a man or a woman who genuinely tries their very best and genuinely dedicates himself to something and is genuinely motivated to make sure they're the best version of themselves who doesn't get what they want. Yeah. I've never seen it. I've never seen someone go, I spend all of my time doing what I'm supposed to do. I do not waste any of my time. I dedicate myself. I'm good to people. I'm honest. I'm hardworking. I'm there on time. Every time I've got a meeting, I've got a firm handshake. I don't snake anybody. So look for people that are loyal. Look for people that are responsible. Look for people that are consistent. Again, look for people that are essentially doing something with their life. All right. And not sitting here wasting it. That's, that's the key. That's the key. God likes me. I do. I work hard. I'm not an evil person. And I work really, really hard. Who doesn't have everything they want. So, like I, so you, everyone can have anything they what? want. I really believe the universe will give anyone anything they want if they actually fucking want it. The, pro the problem is, I think, when people complain. So if someone's complaining that they're broke and being negative, oh, it's really hard. But exactly, and that's why Andrew Tate says what? What did he say? It is your duty to not be a fat piece of shit. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. All right, um, I got a dip. I do have a concert to go to that I've been putting off for a little bit because I really didn't want to. I, I, I'm learning so much from the stream, bro. And we're only an hour in, so I definitely recommend watching the, the last hour. I've already got so many different clips for this shit. So, yo, thank you so much for joining me, all right? And don't forget. You need to do what you're supposed to do, not what you feel like fucking doing. Okay. That's the difference between a man and a fucking child.